It is a fresco depicting the adoration of the Magi. It is the Virgin Mary, her son, and two of the wise men. But don't worry, the third wasn't forgotten. Experts say that the artist who painted the catacomb of Saints Marcellinus and Peter did so for reasons of symmetry. A year of meticulous laser restoration has unveiled what was hidden behind a thick layer of black lime and dirt. They are paintings that speak of the transition from the Roman pagan world to Christianity. Firstly, they speak to us about the importance of dialogue between the classical Roman world and the Christian world that was born. In fact, Christ is represented in the catacombs by the image of Orpheus, attracting souls as a way to establish a bridge of dialogue between different cultures, very important in our time. Frescoes like this are proof of this transition. A woman, Sabina, offers wine to her guests who are reclining on a triclinium. There is no type of religious reference. It's just a scene of everyday ancient Roman life. A few meters down is Orpheus, a pagan symbol who converted to Christianity and who represents Christ himself. The catacomb is an authentic early Christian art gallery. It has regained all of its splendor, oddly enough, thanks to the contribution of Azerbaijan, a country primarily consisting of Shiite Muslims. It's a big deal today when you see Islam and Christianity at odds due to fundamentalism. And what we see here is a great example of collaboration. St. Marcellinus and Peter is one of the oldest catacombs of Rome and also one of the most unknown. It dates back from the 1st century AD and was in use until the 9th century. Therefore, it covers an area of about 200 acres and several floors. Its paintings, labyrinth corridors, and galleries are some of the best testimonies of the rich, ancient presence of Christianity in the Eternal City. The Chrism Mass is one of Holy Week's lesser-known ceremonies. During this Mass, the priests renew their vows alongside the bishop. During this homily at the Vatican, the Pope usually addresses the priests. This year, he has given them some very concrete advice. They have been asked to embody mercy and to show it with concrete works. Specifically, the Pope asks that the priests rejoice for forgiveness and feel shame for their sins. Dopo essermi confessato, festeggio o passo rapidamente a un'altra cosa? Come quando dopo essere andati dal medico vediamo che le analisi non sono andate tanto male e le rimettiamo nella busta e passiamo a un'altra cosa. E quando faccio l'elemosina, do tempo a chi la riceve di esprimere il suo ringraziamento Festeggio il suo sorriso e quelle benedizioni che ci danno i poveri, o proseguo in fretta con le mie cose dopo aver lasciato cadere la moneta? In keeping with the topic of shame, Pope Francis then made a list of some seemingly harmless temptations that plague Christians today. Sentiamo che la nostra anima se ne va assetata di spiritualità ma non per mancanza di acqua viva che beviamo solo a sorsi, ma per un eccesso di spiritualità frizzanti, di spiritualità light. Ci sentiamo anche prigionieri, non circondati come tanti popoli di invalicabili mura di pietra o di recensioni di acciaio, ma da una mondanità virtuale che si apre e si chiude con un semplice click. After proposing to Catholics that they allow themselves to be healed by Jesus and his message, the Pope blessed the oils to be used for the sacraments of the anointing of the sick and the holy orders this year in Rome. The 
choir of Clare College, a constituent college of Cambridge University in England, has released an album for Easter entitled Hayek Dies, Music for Easter. Besides leading the college's chapel services in song three times a week, the choir has done numerous international tours throughout Europe, America, Japan, Russia, the Middle East, and Australia. Hayek Dies, Music for Easter, is only one of the impressive 40 recordings that they have produced. This disc of music for Easter continues our series that has seen us already record music for Advent, for Christmas, for Passiontide, for Ascension and Pentecost, and for all saints and all souls. The pieces found within the album were composed by a variety of European musicians from the 16th century to the 20th century. And the music that I've put together on this program charts the music that would have been heard on Easter Day across the centuries, from the wonderful opening motet by Orlando de Lassus through to works by the early John Tavner, works by Rachmaninoff, by Bassano and many others. The album features 21 tracks and is available for purchase on the Choir of Clare College website for 15 euro. Pope Francis began the ceremony of the Passion of Christ celebrated on Good Friday as he laid on the ground for a moment. After reading the Gospel in the Basilica, the preacher of the Pontifical Household, Father Janiero Cantalamesa, explained the relationship between God's justice and mercy. E ora, venerabili padri, fratelli e sorelle, di renderci conto che l'opposto della misericordia non è la giustizia, ma la vendetta. Gesù non ha opposto la misericordia alla giustizia, ma alla legge del taglione. He explained that divine justice occurs when man's relationship with God is restored. When the sinner recognizes that he is in need of God's love, that is when the mercy of God comes in and forgives and welcomes the sinner. To better understand, he gave the following example of a marriage. If the spouses do not recognize their mistakes and forgive one another, then their relationship may go downhill without ever coming back uphill. Non ci si sposa per misericordia, ma per amore. Ma dopo anni, me, adesso anche mesi di vita insieme, emergono i limiti, i problemi di salute, di finanze, dei figli. Interviene l'abitudine, la routine che spegne tutto. Non dovrebbero marito e moglie impietosirsi l'uno dell'altro. E non dovremmo noi che viviamo in comunità impietosirci gli uni degli altri anziché giudicarci. This lustful love loses its flame due to its superficial surface and is later cemented further with a more profound sensibility. Good Friday is a particularly solemn day, full of silence and self-reflection. The Church celebrates Christ's sacrifice for the salvation of the world. So one of the most special moments of the ceremony is the adoration of the cross where Jesus died for humanity. Thousands of people have accompanied Pope Francis during the Via Crucis at the Colosseum. This year's meditations, entitled Passion of Christ, were written by Cardinal Gualtero Bassetti, the Archbishop of Perugia, Italy. At each station, different people who symbolized pain or difficulty in the world carried the cross. A family with four children carried the cross at the first station. At another station, a disabled man in a wheelchair was present with his sister. Also, a man with his wife and daughters participated. As is the case with many youths all over the world, a group of young people without a job were present at the fourth station. Representatives from countries in crisis like Uganda, Kenya, Bosnia were also present, but also from Syria and China, countries where Christians are persecuted, all carried the cross. During the meditations, the Cardinal compared Christ's suffering with the dramas of today, family struggles, abused children, and the plight of the refugees. At the end of the Via Crucis, the Pope read a touching prayer where he showed some crosses of our time, from the persecuted Christians to terrorism led by fundamentalists and the loneliness of the elderly. O Croce di Cristo, 
Ancora oggi te vediamo eretta nelle nostre sorelle e nei nostri fratelli uccisi, bruciati vivi, sgozzati e decapitati con le spade barbariche e con il silenzio biliaco. O croce di Cristo, ti vediamo ancora oggi nei fondamentalismi e nel terrorismo dei seguaci di qualche religione che profanano il nome di Dio e lo, e lo utilizzano per giustificare le loro inaudite violenze. O Croce di Cristo, ti vediamo ancora oggi nei, nei ladroni e nei corrotti che invece di salvaguardare il bene comune e l'etica si vendono nel misero mercato dell'immoralità. A prayer in which the Pope also thanked God for the goodness in so many people who help others without expecting anything in return. Thousands of people have come to St. Peter's to hear Pope Francis' Easter speech. Europe's heightened fear after the attacks in Brussels has not been noticed this morning in St. Peter's Square, as many were present. As is customary every year, the Pope directed a speech addressing the realities of today's world issues. E eterna. Il Signore Gesù, nostra pace, che risorgendo ha vinto il male e il peccato, e stimoli in questa festa di Pasqua la nostra vicinanza alle vittime del terrorismo, forma cieca e deferata di violenza che non cessa di spargere sangue innocente in diverse parti del mondo, come è avvenuto nei recenti attentati in Belgio, Turchia, Nigeria, Chiara. He is one of the leading scientists of the 20th century. He's considered to be the father of modern genetics, and he's true to his faith. He discovered the chromosome mutation that causes Down syndrome. Jerome Lejeune was one of the first people in the world who promoted the treatments and care for these children and defended their right to live, something that possibly cost him international recognition and even a Nobel Prize. There were even demonstrations against him. There was a lot of belligerence against him for being a defender of human life. All this experience is told in a new film, Jerome Lejeune, to the least of these, my brothers and sisters. Si vous demandez aux généticiens, examinez les chromosomes de cet enfant, et s'ils sont anormaux, je le supprimerai, vous nous demandez de jouer très exactement le rôle de Ponce Pilate. It was one of Lejeune's greatest sufferings to know that his discovery would be the cause of so many abortions. This probably strengthened his fight for these people's defense, that his discovery was used for the exact opposite purpose that he had intended. The film also contains shocking testimonies. On a su qu'il existait un professeur spécialiste de ces enfants-là. Ah ben j'en pleurais. Notre joie d'être enfin, que notre enfant soit enfin reconnu. Jérôme Lejeune was the first president of the Pontifical Academy for Life, which started in 1994 as an initiative by John Paul II. The Pope was also a close friend of Lejeune who gave him comfort and support in the most difficult moments of his career. <laughs> 